You know, this is never a good sign. My wife said it started to get hot in here. Took a look at the, the temperature, it is, is 80 degrees. And it's getting hot and I don't wanna have air conditioner trouble. So I went outside, I'll tell you right now, that sure enough, the, uh, the fan on the compressor is not spinning. But before I run to uh, conclusions here, it hasn't been replaced in 10 years. Got a good feeling it's a capacitor. We're gonna go out and check, but not tomorrow. I have an emergency air conditioner I'm gonna turn up and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna check to see if it's a capacitor or if it's uh, something that I'm gonna have to call a professional. Let's find out. So having a look the next day, we can see the house has gotten a bit hotter. I have my emergency AC in. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna turn the air conditioning back on, right? I don't expect it to cool anything. We can hear the solenoid click, and this is what we're gonna do. I can feel the pickup pulling above me. You can hear, obviously, uh, the air conditioning working in here just fine, right? So, for all intents and purposes, the air conditioning unit itself, the blower unit, is working. All the switches electrically are working fine. And here's the problem, right? There's nothing going on here. This thing is, is not moving, but you can hear buzzing. And, and that's a pretty good indication that we lost a capacitor. And what I'm going to do, uh, just to illustrate this point, and by the way, I, I do not recommend that anybody does this, right? I'm just showing... Uh, how I test this and at this point if you don't work on this stuff you should call a professional to have this replaced so I'm saying that now not to do this but I'm going to show you how I do it because I can so what we're going to have to do is this I'm going to stick the cable tie in here grab the fan blade and I'm just going to jump start it However, is not going to fix the issue. All I did was uh, prove that there was a failure in the capacitor because this capacitor, however, serves more than one function. There's two taps in this unit. One of them is also used to run the compressor. Showed me that it failed. I'm going to shut down this unit now and I'm going to have to replace it because even though I did get the fan to spin, I'm probably not going to get any hot air coming up from here, which means not going to be cold air. Uh, in the house and it, it's not going to be good so I'm gonna I'm gonna go and shut the main breaker now I'm gonna take a look at this cab I'm gonna pull it out so first order of business kill that breaker it's not gonna die for this kill that breaker and then on a happier note I'm going to remove the service cover right here having removed the cover we could see the culprit is right here and we could see that uh, with the three connections, it is a dual cap, and with the dual cap, there is a start and a run for it. So I'm going to have to pull that capacitor out. Just charge a cap to ground, just in case there's anything in it. I don't expect there will be, but you really got to be safe. So there we go. There's nothing in it. It's discharged. It's good. Having recorded exactly where the wires go beforehand, uh, I've loosened the capacitor, I've disconnected the wires, and now I'm going to slide the cap up. And we can see this is a 55 and 5, so this is for both the fan and the compressor. So I see a C here for common, indication for fan, and this says, it says like Herm or something, I don't know. We know that's compressor, so we're, we're going to go with that. I'm going to test this out real quick. And she, it should stand to reason it didn't, it didn't short, right? Or, or it would have blown uh, the breaker. And that, that much is true. Okay, so that didn't happen. Whatever it did though, it, it died in the in the open, right? Both positions have no capacitance on them whatsoever. Which is zero. Right? So it, it it failed in what I refer to as the best way possible. And this means that neither the compressor nor the uh, fan would have functioned. So the fan, as I demonstrated, you could override the fan uh, very easily. Uh, for a one shot if you needed to and if it was just a, a single type capacitor and you needed to, to cool down the house uh, for a single cycle uh, to get it back down to whatever temperature you could have you could have done that I, again don't recommend it because it's YouTube so I'm saying don't do it you could have done that right but for these situations with the dual it won't work right it would be good to test but it would never happen I'm gonna go out now and I'm gonna go and get another capacitor and we're gonna come back to this 
I realize I probably could have done better than Home Depot, but in a pinch at 7 o'clock in the morning, I didn't have a whole lot of options. I learned today that Home Depot does not carry these. Uh, this was a revelation. Not that I shop for these, but I did pick it up to my local electric supply store. And when I did, and we looked at it together, uh, quite a revelation indeed, because now that I can see what a new one looks like, you can see how much of a raise there is on the old versus the new. This one's ready to explode. Look at that. Wow, right? So, without further ado, uh, I'm going to put the new one in now. One last time to line up fan, herm, and C. Make sure they're all in the right direction so that the cable loom is uh, falling into place or things would be terrible. So I did a little research on what these capacitors are made of and, and inside they're oil filled to cool them, right? It may be castor oil, I'm not sure. I believe it's castor oil. And when I shook the new can, I could, I could, I could hear the, the oil sloshing around. And on this one, I, I got nothing. And, and, I, and I wonder if it, at some point already, if maybe there was a pinhole leak as this had expanded, if, if it, the, all the oil had actually uh, uh, boiled off or, or gone out from the unit because, I mean, I got, I got nothing in here, right? And I could, I could squeeze the sides. It feels like it's under pressure, but yeah, this was definitely an, an accident waiting to happen, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this, but I, I just found that to be interesting because the other one you could shake it, it shakes like, a, like, an, like an aerosol bottle. New units and put the wires back in their original positions. Now I'll put the cover back on. I don't, I don't want to test it out with the cover off. It, it's either going to work or it's not. And once this capacitor is energized, I don't feel like uh, discharging it uh, to uh, get close to it again, right? So if it doesn't work, what am, what am I going to do anyway? I'm going to end up having to uh, defer to a professional. I might as well have it closed. So I'm going to do that now. Also, while I'm here, it's probably not a terrible idea to pour a little bit of uh, uh, water and vinegar down this service pipe for the drain. Make sure that's not clogged. Covers back on the unit. Let's apply mains power and test it out. System set to on. Let it kick. Clicked on. We'll take a look at the unit in the garage. Unit in the garage is running. This unit is spinning. Looks funny in here. And the air is getting hotter. Well, let's see. I'm going to give it a minute. It does feel as though it is getting warm now. The important thing is to check for is that the air here gets hot, right? We need to test it. And I'm going to start to see if we get uh, water coming out of the tube. It's going to take a little while because it really hasn't been running since yesterday. Um, there is a, a small bit of a level before it starts reaching uh, that plateau before it starts draining out of here. So we'll give it a few minutes. It's going to run for a good long time because the house is like about 84 degrees. So we'll, we'll let this run for about 10 to 15 minutes and come back to it. Temperature is dropping quickly. Very nice. We can see water pouring out of the pipe now as it pulls humidity from the house. It's uh, reached that plateau. A lot of water indeed. Look at that. System seems really healthy now. Everything's working great. I'm very happy. Yeah, that's doing just fine. Look at that. I always like to go back and take a look on Amazon to see if I could have done better on the price. And even though there are several options ranging from $15 to $30, look at the total amount of service hours, you find that the one that costs $30 has three times the amount of hours of the one that costs $15, the, uh, the no-name knockoff from China. So keep that in mind. I ended up paying $31, so I ended up not doing too bad. And all I really needed was a cable tie, a couple of tools, and $30 to get it back working again. I hope you found this video of my AC repair enjoyable and helpful. Thanks for watching.